What's up everybody, Andrew Green here with HAG Fishing and today we're talking about probably one of the uh, the most important techniques in kayak fishing and one of the most important skills you can have and that is maximizing a small area. So we have a little area, catch as many fish as possible from that area with different approaches, different angles, different depths and just some different ways to, uh, to think about things. We're on Bayou Chenal and that is in New Roads or near New Rose, Louisiana. It's late November. We're just a few days away from December and it is extremely cold. So we're going to see what happens. I can't help it. I seriously oh, am an addict when it comes to catching bass on the top water. So here I am. It's 34 degrees, the skies are bright, a north wind's blowing, and I'm throwing a buzz bait. It isn't working, not even a little bit. Now, conditions aren't ideal for it, but I seriously do suspect the biggest culprit is the high pressure system that moved through the night before. Now, it is worth sacrificing a few minutes or so just to be certain. I feel like 15 minutes makes me an optimist. Now, an hour would make me a fool, and not saying that's a very hard thing to do, but it does just happen from time to time. You know, really is it's so important to not do something that's not working for too long. I know that sounds, uh, <laughs> sounds like it would be obvious, but that's a very easy thing to fall into, is just kind of say, okay, well maybe if I keep going, I keep going and you know, something will change. I'm about 15 minutes, 20 minutes into fishing, and uh, I've already changed pretty drastically uh, the approach I'm taking and if this doesn't work then we'll change again and we'll just keep going until something happens because I know they're here it's just a matter of uh, figuring out the, uh, the approach quickly have it pit boss with some uh, some liquid mayhem garlic crawfish juice it's delicious not for me yeah, for the fish, apparently. So they say. The buzz bait went away fairly quick, mainly because I felt I needed to fish something that was lower in the water column. All signs were pointing to them definitely not being suspended. So that's number one, not uh, not exactly what we're looking for. But it's a clue, you know, a bite is a bite right on a log in about three feet of water on the, uh, on the pit boss. So that could give us a little hint about what we need to be doing. Tiny. Okay, so I'm at the end of the uh, the quarter mile stretch that I wanted to fish, and I have one tiny little uh, tiny little bass to show for it. No keepers. So far, I've thrown the uh, half ounce war eagle spinner bait. I've also thrown. One of my favorites, and I really wish it was uh, it worked today. It's the uh, Strike King Buzz King. It's the three prop buzz blade made by Strike King. Really, really good for like a, a colder water, slow kind of retrieve. Threw it around a bit to no avail. The one thing that I've gotten a bite on has been the uh, that Havoc Pit Boss and a little bit deeper water kind of dredging the bottom. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back through this exact same area, uh, the same little stretch of, you know, of canal that I fished to start with, back off the bank a little more, and I think I'm going to concentrate on some of the, you know, the deeper spots. Um, so this is, in a way, it's good. Uh, I'm kind of getting to prove my point that you can fish back through something, and that's really what you want to do in a kayak. You have to maximize the space that you're given. You can't just crank up and, you know, and run 15 miles away. So you got to work with what you got. What you got. That's what I'm about to do. Hopefully it works out a little better. I'm gonna stick with this guy. I think that's the ticket. Now I'm back to the brush pile where the first little guy came from, and just like that, I pick up number two. Not a giant. Certainly not what I'm looking for. That it just bit like there were a few more around. That's a really good sign. 
that that guy was in a brush pile that's just way off the bank. I just found it with the uh, with the bait. We'll go back in and see if there's more. So on the second pass, I slowed down and really tried to deal my way around the cover. I want to know how big it is. Where are the limbs at? Is there a sweet spot? Are they on the left or on the right? So change the presentation, change the angles, and you're just trying to feel your way around with the lure. Now this canal is only five feet deep, so sonar really does no good. The So that was my uh, that was my second pass through that little area. The first time I was kind of fishing closer, and I uh, I didn't know that brush was there. I backed off a little bit on the second pass. I was able, though it wasn't much, to uh, to pick up another one. A bit like there was more around it. We'll see. That's a little bit. That's a keeper. And one thing you always want to do, you want to look. You want to look at a bass when you catch one. You see how white he is? That uh, he's been down. You know, he hadn't been in the sun. He hadn't been on the bank. They've kind of been hanging on that little brush that's uh, just off the bank a little bit. Not bad. Chunky little guy. Could be more. Havoc Pit Boss. That is. Coming. 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 Cookie cutters, dude. 12 inch cookie cutters. Not what I thought I was gonna come across today, but apparently there's a uh, there's a lot down there. It's still so white. They're all like that. It's pale, pale, pale. Ah, it's something. You know when you're uh, when you're going down a canal like this, there's a lot of cover that you can see. Those little sticks that are a few feet off the bank. There's some really obvious lay down trees. But a lot of times, what I like to do, especially on a second pass down a bank, is just fish what looks like open water. And so many times, I mean, if you look around, you say, oh, I mean, well, there's thick woods, so there's got to be more trees that are down that you don't know about. And often, uh, that's where your biggest fish are going to come from, or from those little pieces of cover that are not obvious and you wouldn't have known about had you not just drug something you know uh, across the bottom could be a crankbait in this uh in this case i'm using just the old the old texas rig to find it so i just left the uh the brush pile while they were kind of stacked up <clears throat> the camera died so i charged the camera went to the other end of the little stretch that i was fishing and said, man, I gotta do something different. I can't catch everything today. Just on, <laughs> on one lure in one spot. So I switched to a 3 8 ounce Booyah spinnerbait. The second piece of isolated cover I came to. Caught a nice keeper. Smacked it like he wanted it to. So we could be on to the start of uh, something else. So like I said, going back through the same area, different lure, different approach, looking at the cover a little differently. And that is the result. Let's see if I keep it up. So another pass down the same bank that I had fished earlier, but with a spinnerbait, has yielded a couple of keepers. I'm going to call that a success. Solid, very solid backup plan. The spinnerbait bite was fun while it lasted. Unfortunately, that wasn't very long. Solid backup plan, though. After that 
kind of petered out. I did go back to the brush pile where all the action seemed to be. I really hate it for everything to come from that one small spot, but that's the way it was. All in all, for the conditions, not a bad day. It was post cold front. The skies were blue. The north wind was definitely blowing and the water was cold. Not a recipe for high numbers of catches. I still wound up with 11 or 12 solid keepers for the day. No giants though. Lessons learned. Go back through the cover. Don't ever assume that you've caught what was there on the first pass. Had I just caught that one and moved on, I wouldn't have gotten the other 10 or 11 fish that came from the one spot. Hey, thank you all so much for watching the first episode of Oxbow Basics. I really do hope you enjoyed. Three things to take away from that. Um, don't ever forget the pit boss. Don't ever forget a pit boss. And the third, you guessed it, don't ever forget the Berkeley Havoc pit boss. That really was the, uh, the most productive thing I had going. And it really goes to show you there's so much more than you can get out of one spot than you think on the first pass. You know, the first pass through that little brush, uh, pile of brush, just one little tiny keeper bass on the second pass things really uh, started going on a caught a limit just from there and I also uh, came up with a backup plan to kind of coexist with that that one brush pile and that is how you get the most out of one spot I really do hope y'all enjoyed uh, be tuned stay tuned for the next episode it's gonna be filmed on Lake Concordia and it's going to be fishing riprap banks long stretches of uh, riprap banks now, I did film the last episode in uh, Bayou Chanel, which is a little backwater off of uh, Falls River. But stay tuned. Hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoy the next one. What's up, everybody? I'm Andrew Green, and this is Oxbow Basics.